Do you guys have any other questions? We totally kind of spun off for a second and kind of talked a little bit about a thing called recipes. It's very, very handy. They can be used on the sales side as well, and it, it actually kind of creates like a group or uh, a different way for people to play. Okay. Um, uh, one of the trainings that we did back a little while, there was a, a wedding planner, and they wanted to kind of do some fun stuff. We did a recipe for them. What's your venue? How many tables do you want? How many chairs? How many this? So that's on the sales side. So literally, you could walk down through it and create a quick little invoice for the person using a sales. Okay, so you could set it up, and it didn't have to be the same amount coming up. You could just say, I'm going to use some of tables, some of chairs, and you could actually go in and add. Okay, we were just going really fast. Um, watch this for just a second right here, okay? On this particular recipe, and I'm just going to actually go back to the recipe build homepage, just using my quick search. When we were actually in here and we hit edit on this, I physically put in quantities right here, okay? It would be a piece of cake if I actually had an op optional piece in there. Say I wanted to do tomato starter kits or whatever. I could technically change pumpkin seeds to zero tomato seeds to zero, and pumpkin starter kits to zero, and tomato to zero, and then all of a sudden I could do either or, just depending on which ones I physically wanted to add it to. Okay. Does, that, does that make sense how you can yeah. kind of do that? Yeah. Um, just for fun, like we are still in kind of a play site, but I'm going to log out and actually just log in and show you. Okay, we were actually under one called uh, a, fi a family restaurant type deal. Was this where we were at? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so watch this. I'm going to go to the recipe build homepage here. And they actually wanted to do like a wedding planning. Now you'll notice filled in whole is more like making a cherry pie, okay? You're going to physically make something and then you're going to sell out slices of pie. This right here is a build and sell, so this is going to deal on the invoice side, but it's still a recipe. If I hit build prep right here, Check out this one right here. Do you want to do outdoor or indoor at the chapel? Shannon, let's pretend that you're going to marry. Okay, boom. Okay, see how I'm just kind of incrementing this little indicator right here? Okay, so let's talk about uh, your cake tables. How many cake tables? One. One, no problem. How about your round tables? Oh, 12. You want 12 of those? Now, I could go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, like... If you get impatient, you just go like this, okay? <laughs> That's how you do it. Okay, so your, your buffet tables. Two. Two of those. Okay. Um, how about your sign-in table? Did you Don't want to sign-in? one of those. Okay, we'll just leave it zero. Basically, can you see how a recipe just like kind of walks you through this little process here? Anything that is zero won't actually be added to my cart, but anything that is will. Let's say that right here that she gets down to the bottom and she actually wanted some service, okay? Would you like some table service stuff? This oh, is, sure. This is per hour. And it's currently at $15 per hour. Two hours. Two hours of that, no problem. Okay. Um, I also offer dishwashing service. Are you interested in that? Yes, brilliant. Then you don't have to. It's 15 bucks an hour. How many? Let's uh, book you for four. It looks like you guys are going to have quite a few people. But anyway, you can kind of see what's going to happen. You do the build right here. And basically, what ends up happening is uh, you can actually populate those pieces right into an invoice right here. Okay. So that's, that's what's called build and sell recipe versus a build and hold, which we were playing on the PO side. But anyway, recipes are quite powerful if you if you needed that kind of a functionality. Okay? Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and clear this cart, and we'll switch back into our site that we were working in. Switch corporations, we're going to go right back into the green, blah, 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 what was it called? Greenway. Greenway. Okay, I'm currently in as Atlas Demo. I'm no longer in under Brandon, but I just I logged out and then back in. So just so you guys know on that. Okay, awesome. Any other questions on that? I'd actually like to hear from some of you guys just for fun. We've covered a lot of ground. We're sitting at about 4 o'clock. We've got about another hour. I'd like to switch towards invoices and quotes and some of those. Unless you guys have other pieces or questions about POs. Yes. We can run over on a card that's been submitted, uh, then add to <coughs> oh, like, like, line like added, after the then, fact, and then yeah, lining up the amount. And everything. Okay, so okay, sure, that, sure, sure. Yeah, so because we run into problems where we just void it because it's kind of confusing. Okay, no, pr no problem, no problem. So it's the same thing that happens on a PO. Okay, yeah, basically you have a main versus line items, and then 
Eventually, you have one more bucket on an invoice, which is payments. How did that person pay for that thing? Okay, that's another little bucket that kind of ends up adding up to the pieces. So let's let's do a scenario. Let's say that somebody wants to buy some of these pumpkin starter kits. We just have them right now, right? So let's go like this. So right now, I know that I don't have any sort of invoice or cart right here. Okay. So I'm in the quick search. I'm going to go PUM, and I'm going to tell it item. Go get me what I have under pumpkin. I should have at least two different things. Here's my pumpkin seeds, and here is my starter kits. How many of these starter kits would you guys like, just for fun? Two of the starter kits. We click Add Cart, and we select the different type of cart type. And say we're just going to do a counter sale. Here's your little different piece of the puzzle. It adds <coughs> tax. Is there anything else that you would like with this cart? There's some root beer in here. You guys want? You guys picked up a piece of root beer, okay? And how many of these do you want? They're 50 cents a piece. They're really cheap. Say you guys want at least two root beers, okay? They're only 50 cents a piece. So good stuff. <laughs> okay, so you got some some pumpkin starter kits, and you picked up a couple root beers. So when we go to checkout right here, we go to checkout, and how did you want to pay for this? You're currently at $43.92. Um, put it on the account. Okay, no problem. So you go like this. Click. As soon as you put it on account, that means they're still going to owe me that, all righty? So basically what we did virtually is the piece that deals with payments on your bucket is you said, I am going to put one, but it's going to be zero, <clears throat> okay? So technically, you're still going to owe me. We'll hit continue, and I'll say create this invoice. And so currently, here you go, wow, cool, but you still owe me $43, okay? Okay, now we want to add another starter kit on this. Okay, no problem. So often what happens is, is you're not even at this invoice, okay? You're potentially somewhere else or somebody else. Like well, that. Oh, crud. We would have went customer and started new, the customer, started the new cart for the customer, bring up the two pumpkin okay. starter okay. kits, created the invoice, our cart, uh -huh. and um, on account because we have to deliver it and get our money. Sure, sure. Bring it back okay. and go through accounting. So now, after that, we want to add on another pumpkin. Okay, no problem. Where does my data exist? You got to know where right it now exists. It's under the item. Okay. Right. So, sorry. So let's go right here for just a quick second. Okay. Watch this. Here's what basically happens. Okay. We basically let's say that Joe customer. I didn't assign it to anything. We used the shopping cart. We created an invoice, and we pulled out a couple different items out of our inventory. Okay. Where is the item that we need well, to modify? I'm saying that's what I know. For me, it would be cart or an invoice. Okay. So. Technically, it's still sitting right there. That's where the data is stored. Okay, so that's where we're going to actually head, and I'll show you how to modify that so that we can say, "Oh, no problem. You really meant to be three. So under system assets, I'm so go, last invoice. Totally, like if you could totally just go last, but sometimes you may not be able to find it that way. Okay, right. we'll go invoice homepage, which basically takes me to my invoices. Here's my stuff. Um, ideally, you would actually have a physical customer name here, so you could kind of look it up by that particular customer and you come into edit mode. If you go to principal mode, you don't have any options. You can't do anything, really. Okay? You have to be in edit mode, and the piece that we want to do is we want to modify this little guy right here. Okay? So it looks like there's an edit link off to the side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of blow out just so you can see what this page is. Invoice line items. Just for a minute. Okay? I know that this looks really small. Here's your main. Here's your line items. Here's your payments. Here's your edit line item. Here's your add edit payment function, okay? So we're going to just jump back in there. So what we're going to do, just so you can kind of get where we're at, from the top, coming down, pumpkin starter kit, oh, they really wanted three. I'm going to click edit. I scratch that out, change it to three. I'm going to still let it recalculate the taxes, okay? I'm not even worried about any of these values. As long as that is clicked, it will re redo my taxes for me, okay? If I uncheck it, it will leave it what it was. Can you add two sodas on it? Absolutely, absolutely. Edit my line items. So currently, I now have a problem. It immediately starts flagging some stuff, okay? It's not a big deal. And you said we wanted to add a soda as well? I so, didn't cherry cola. I said a different one. Okay, great. A different one, not the same. So like, just, one new, just one new thing? Yeah. So watch this, okay? So I'm right here. I'm currently in edit mode. I'm going to kind of just switch this page back to add mode again, okay? So I'm still on the exact same page. i got two of them. And now my thing down here doesn't have data in it. I'm currently in add mode. And so what is, you said you had one cherry. Okay, let's go see what we have. Cherry cola, cool, added to the line item. So this is after the fact. It's already left the shopping cart. So I'm kind of just slowly building it. 
and quantity one, 25 cents, 50 cents per taxable Great, Sounds good. Do it up. So there's my one cherry cola. I now have this. All of my taxes have been rolled into one. However, I'm way off. I went from $43 to $65. Okay? So literally, this is all the step that you are missing is, is this guy is now wrong. It's considered a piece in the main. The reason that we don't automatically update it is how do we know when you're done and how do we even flag it so you're like, okay, oh yeah, I've, I've tightened this whole thing up. Some people have asked us, well, why don't you just automatically update that? Automatic. Well, we don't know when you're done in a way. So what we do is we personally, if you leave the cart mode, the cart mode, we automatically keep that. But as soon as you leave that mode, it's kind of like, okay, whoa, they're playing with me. I'm just going to sit here until they're done. You know, that's kind of what we do. For us, it's like, this is their invoice for the quarter. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a little bit to, to get ready and stuff. So it's out there on COD. Okay, okay, sure, okay. sure, so, sure. For us to have it just auto populate because it's an invoice for this person, mm -hmm. um, and then you know maybe it would be easier for us because when it comes back to the account, she's the one who would tell it that it's closed, and we know they don't know that money. Okay, cor correct, correct. And so basically, your math down here is adding up things. So, so essentially, what's the next, next step? We got to put forty three ninety two on there. So no, 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 no. This is actually the old one. Right. Okay. So what we do is we literally find the little link that says edit main. We click on it, and what it does is when we come down to the physical, this is what we had recorded when we originally created it. Okay? So we basically just change the one value to 65 bucks. 65.89. It does tell you. It tries to say, hey, just so you know, the sum of the line items is this. Okay? And then you basically say this, edit it, edit the invoice. All of a sudden I'm super happy. I'm 65. I'm 65 and I'm still fully on account, and they still owe me 65 bones now. Okay? Like, I fixed all the pieces. It's just you have to figure out which piece you needed to fix. That's, I think you were just missing that one little link. That, that one the last thing you yep. did where you changed the math for the same as what we were missing. That actually is very common in almost every single piece of the puzzle. Okay? Uh, if I were to switch to this little graphic right here for just a second, guess what? A quote has a main. Invoices have a main. Customers do not. They're just kind of general pieces. Okay? POs have a main. Expenses have a main, deposits have a main. So like, say for instance, you were going to build your deposit and you're like, I don't even know how much that is. There's a stack of money right now, okay? You just say, I'm going to deposit everything I did today. So originally you would have probably put your deposit at zero, and then you say, add, 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 add. It adds it up and says, hey, I should have $450 here, okay? Then you start counting. Depends on which way you go. Oh yeah, I do have 450 What do you know? It's like, you'd have to go back and edit the main on the deposit and all of a sudden, oh, cool. Now it happened. Because basically we allow you to kind of create the container without knowing all the information at, at first. Or in your case, right here on this invoice, it happened, and then I had to kind of add it after the fact because it, it changed from what I originally thought it was. So edit the main, that's kind of how you'll be able to fix any little piece of the puzzle inside of Atlas. Awesome. Oh, those are great questions, guys. Great, great questions. Good stuff. So you edit the main if it's in that top part, or you edit the line item if it's in the bottom part. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, let's do this right here for just a second. I'm going to switch into printable mode because it will kind of make it look a little bit better. And I'm going to minus out just a little bit. Okay, so here's our invoice. Watch this. We have the main. We have the line items. We have the payment. And currently, there's only one specific payment on that, okay? There's also tons of history and all kinds of stuff. If I were to make that same model in here, you could see how I could make it, okay? I've got the main. It's actually not tied to a customer. It has three line items, and it has one payment. And behind the scenes, it probably has a number of system histories, okay? That's what that particular item is right there as an object, okay? Those are, those are great questions, guys. Please keep it coming. That's perfect. Okay, Santiago, do you have any questions? I uh, know I do. Okay. Let's, let's hear one of your questions All just right. for fun. So sometimes I do uh, an invoice and then I sell at the same time uh, some other products. Okay, cool. So I know it's a, you can duplicate the invoice, but uh -huh. you have to go over and edit some of the line items. <coughs> okay. Um, so say I all right, so say I sold one time. So all right, let me just kind of run through my scenario. So okay. I sell hardware too. 
So I got uh, POS, touchscreens, cache chores, and FTC papers. Okay. I take it over to this client that they pay. Okay. And I kind of go over there and take it back from them. It's out to a new client. So I, I want to change the PO, but I also want to send them send them a invoice saying you can pay me. <coughs> you you did right pay now. me or you don't you didn't pay me or yeah, he didn't pay anyway. So I took I took the product back and sold it to somebody else. Now I don't want to have to enter in all I mean there's a lot of data that I have to enter in there. Okay, so you're actually talking about a return, okay? So yeah, but so I did not enter it in my <laughs> system as a kind of a vendor and an item just okay. because it's kind of a random item that I purchased and I'm selling. Okay. But there's a lot of information that I'm going to add to the, the log notes or Okay, so your log notes are going to tell part of the story, but yeah. technically you kind of have some random little pieces that you're pulling out of the air in a way, yeah. Santiago. But, but you can totally do that, but one of the things that you could do is actually do a return, like if you were physically tracking it in, and you're like, oh man, I, I actually, say for instance right here on this particular one right here, we don't have a, a client assigned to it. Say they wanted to bring one of these back and I owed them some money. I literally could go like this, I could say, hey, no problem. Um, I'm just going to actually create a brand new invoice. So we'll just say start a new cart and say I was just going to give them a thing back. I'd say start the new cart. It's right here and I just search for my kits and I say, you know what, I'll return one of those, no problem. Well, Edit. It was it in the system that I kind of wanted the same kind of invoice. Okay. Um, I, I typed in all this information. Right? So what you wanted to do, uh, you would basically still create kind of like a, now are you you're trying to collect from them or like no. so so basically just so you know immediately as soon as you start saying well I just kind of typed it in and I kind of wanted to do this in order to finish your process you kind of just need to finish yeah. like you're not it's not really the system's problem or fault you kind of need to keep faking it if you're faking it you need to keep faking it if that makes sense so you <laughs> no I, I don't know if that makes sense <coughs> like, um, you're trying to say real versus like this was only quasi anyway, and so we started selling hardware. Mm -hmm. So we really kind of jumped into it. We're adding items now. Okay. What, what I purchased, what I did for uh, kind of first client, first bill. Okay. Okay. So first hardware. So I was kind of a quick invoice in the car. Okay. So, they, so, so what I would do is just kind of you could even create another fake invoice to the person. Hey, you only still owe me for this, and I'm gonna virtually credit you back to this. So instead of me actually physically saying, hey, I'm going to do a physical return, like a negative one on this, and then going clear through, so I owe you the, you know, $21.43, like that's a return. What you would probably want to do is something like this. I'm just going to click uh, remove from right here just to kind of show you how I would kind of do it. But I would kind of go like this. So say they originally owed me something. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to add a special line item probably under other. Here's my other. I'm going to go into advanced add to cart. I'm clicking here. I'm going to say, hey, one of 400 bucks. This is fake, okay? So this isn't really even tied to inventory. But let's say something like this. 400 and originally uh, uh, point of sale equipment, hardware. Da, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. You list it out. Yep, yep. Printer, cash, drawer. How do you spell it? Is that how you spell it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyway, um, et cetera, et cetera, and barcode scanner, okay? Okay, pretend like you put a bunch of information. Originally, it was for 400 bucks. You'd say, add it to the cart, okay? Now, you'll notice that I used this little guy. This was a special line item. Instead of it being a physical thing, this was a piece that's already in the system. You just kind of used it. And then what I would do is I'd kind of go like this. I'd say another one. I'd go other, and then I'd say, okay, advanced at the cart, so instead of just adding it, and I'd say negative one, and I'd go something like this. Uh, say they still, you still needed to collect a little bit. 350. Okay, whatever. Yeah. So basically, negative one of 350, and I'd go like this. So you can't add the negatives in there. That's yeah, the on the quantity you can, not on the price. The price must be positive, but this time this, this eventually quantity. creates the negative. On the, on the price, it's just the quantity yeah. only? Yeah. <clears throat> so 
or you sit, whatever you wanted to do. You put in your different piece and you say add it to the cart. Okay. So technically right now they owe me fifty dollars and some tax just because I was taxing some stuff. Now if you wanted to add in labor, you could do that as well. You just basically go, oh, I put on LAT. Let me change that real quick. And labor is actually one of the items that we have in the system. Correct. So those are one of the system line items that exist already. But say you actually wanted to say, hey, you know what, you actually owed me for 10 hours at 35 bucks an hour labor to do initial setup or whatever. Okay. You print it out, whatever you wanted to do it. But basically, watch this. Positive 400 minus 350, basically. Oh, you owe me 403 bucks. That's going to kind of totally wrap all of my pieces in the puzzle. Okay, so now These were all fake items. Like, we literally didn't use a single item that we literally had in yeah, image. I like that. But now I'm saying, okay, well, if I actually work for you, let's, let's add a labor as a line item. Okay. So, let's, let's so, <laughs> so technically it's right here. You wanted another one at, at somebody no, no, else's? No, actually, I want, to, I want to add that to my inventory. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Because maybe I'm charging more labor. Okay. Now I want to just... Sure so remember, by, by default, you get like 17 special ones that we call it, labor and discount and other and verbiage and, and some of those ones. If you want to create your own one where you're like custom setup or something like this, you literally, in order to add it into the system so that you can sell it as custom setup, you would do a PO, an internal PO, and then you would create a, a labor item that was unlimited. Okay? And so once it's in there, then you could use that as your item instead of labor or other or something like that. Those are generic generics. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Well, I was going to switch topics. Oh, okay, um, no problem. Do you guys have a question as far as like how you actually put in a service? If we put in some items and some generics and some vendor specific, do you know how to put in a service? Okay, so, so say for right here, this is a generic item that we create for you called labor. But say for instance you physically want to to be called <coughs> setup labor. Okay? You'd have to create that. Watch this. If I come up here, item setup, and I say, do I have it? It's going to come back and say, okay, it looks to me like uh, we do have some LED setup stuff, but I don't have anything that says labor setup. Okay? Here's how you literally could add it. You'd go to the, basically, I'm going to put it under myself as the vendor. Okay? Here's how I would do it. Vendor, green. Here's my thing. Create a new PO. This is, this is going to be a basic live, and I'm going to say creating general services. Why would you tie it to inventory? Okay, good question. Basically, what has to happen is this process, okay? Eventually, I need to pull it out of here in order to put it on my invoice, right? Okay. The only path into this general inventory pool is here. And so, don't worry, it's going to be total zero, zero, no thing, and everything's going to be unlimited. Okay. But in order to load this part of the puzzle, I have to come in through this path. That's why we're that's why we're kind of breaking out to that portion. Creating some general services, it's going to be totally a zero amount right here. And yes, I do have this. I'm basically taking the system out, okay? I create a new PO, which gives me a holding container, okay? And then I actually go and say setup or anything like that. It didn't find anything like that. I say add a new item. So basically what happens right here is we went like this. Okay, we create the vendor, we create the PO, we search for it, it says, oh, I didn't have it. And then it says, okay, cool, let me break out, we'll actually do a little bit of work here, and then I'm going to pull you right back into the PO. And that's so, what we're going to add a dollar value. Cor correct, correct. So watch this, I'm going to leave it at zero quantity, I don't even care. This is totally going to go negative, because I'm going to do it, I'm going to set it up as unlimited. So let's call it like this, setup, labor, okay? Now this is the key, key switch right here, this thing called your type. Do you physically have it? Do you want us to count it? Or do you want it to be unlimited, like a service, okay? I'm going to flip it to unlimited. And then here I'm going to basically say, oh, I don't have the container, I'm just going to put it under my inventory. Um, and then you would actually describe your setup labor. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, just pretend that you're actually putting in this includes. Da, 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 da. Okay, come in here. Your cost is going to be zero. Okay, this is basically just so it can hit 
How much do you want to charge per hour on this thing or something? 35 bucks? No problem. $35, sale price only, and guess what? This is actually going to be hourly, okay? And then you come on down. I'm going to skip everything else. And tax category. Oh, tax oh good call, good call. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sherry. We flip that to labor. Very good, Sherry. Very good catch. And we're going to say add item. So what this does is basically um, on my little PO, I literally just went like this, okay? So I said, PO, my numbers, it's thinking right now. Okay, number 16, so that's kind of in my main. It's tied to Greenway vendors. That's one of my cups. I come on down. I have one line item right here. And behind the scenes, I have probably a couple little system histories that happen. Okay? But I can now sell this thing called setup labor for a price of 35 bucks. Okay? So then I can add that to my uh, line Absolutely. Watch this. So instead of this labor being right here, and I, I pulled it in under labor, I'm going to go like this. You are gone. Update the cart. And I'm going to say like this. Set. Oh, there's my setup labor. How many hours did I want to add? Five. Five hours. No problem. Click. Okay, so now it's physically called my setup hours or my setup labor. It's per hour and it's on site and this includes whatever, whatever, whatever. If I wanted to modify it, it's as easy as going right here to edit and say five hours of this and this. This doesn't affect the original. The original will just have the dots on it, okay? But literally you can just pop through there. Update. You're just literally working with your cart. Your cart is very flexible. It allows you to say that I put the buttons in my cart. Okay, no problem. That's not what you would, would do right now. You'd want to get this thing out the door, okay? So is this a quote or an invoice? It's an invoice. Okay, you go like this. Check out, and how's the person paying for it? It's 228 bucks right now. Check, no problem. So you go 228.7, and you'd say check, and you'd put the check number in. Oh, it looks like it was... 7778. Okay, continue. Here's your last final review and check. Once again, you can skip this if you'd like. It's a setting. Okay, let's say create that invoice. This one happens to be default into the little mini printer guy, but uh, you could actually have it go to whatever view you want it to. Okay, so, so technically you just created this brand new thing called setup labor. But if you actually go and look for it, your item, and you go set up. It's a lot of unlimited. Things, if we go back to says you have to verify on lines. Uh, uh, verify which piece because it like what happens is you, you kind of like start advancing the ball and it depends on hey are we just playing quick sales and operations or are we advancing it clear to payroll and invoice levels and commissions and like that's where some of the verifying pieces can be. <laughs> for, for me with someone on COD where you put in that check amount and the check number um, is there a way, like, should I not create a cart because I'm essentially going to find out what that check number is? I mean, should I create a So I, I, would put, I would put on account, on account. account. If you're going to do on account, look, okay, let me show you so something that's option, super yeah, scary, okay? Account. Watch this. If I go to my invoice homepage, how am I going to track down this money? Sewer says verify right there, but it says no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Should I always go back and verify? Okay, verified on an invoice only deals with paying for payroll, okay? So if you're dealing with commissions and stuff, you're like, oh yeah, that was a good invoice and I'm going to lock it down. What it does is it says, anybody who's underneath that, I'm sorry, I just locked that. You don't have the permissions to advance to that level. It's been locked because I'm going to approve it for payroll, okay? And you're That's, only approving it for payroll and verifying it if you got your money. If you got your bananas and stuff, Otherwise, okay? Otherwise, your buddy shouldn't be getting this. Yeah, yeah, well, sometimes I might have verified and said, yes, that was a good dough. Okay, and so it did. Another sale that came in, and I want to duplicate the order, and then he's got more money coming on me to duplicate the order, and I can't verify it because now... Okay, I so I would only verify on an invoice level if you're trying to go to commissions and payroll, okay? Mm -hmm. So what it is is it's kind of like, here's, here's basically a small little piece of the puzzle, if you will. See how you have these little dots and lines and stuff? At which checkpoint do you want it to go, and then where's your permission level as far as those different little checkpoints? That's kind of what's happening. Those are great questions. Here's what I would do for you guys on account, is I would never put it under a counter sale. I would for sure put it under a physical customer so you can go back to that thing. Yeah.
Well, yeah, I mean, I can, I can show you. I mean, if you take uh, you know, A station and, a, you know, A station orders, we always put it on account. Sure, sure. we don't know yet. Sure. Uh -huh. And then we get it back and I give it to my account. So essentially she can go back in and bring up how that payment section was and then Correct. put in cash or check Correct. or so mailing or on what, what it's still. Exactly. What happens right here is you guys are dealing a lot with this right here, okay? Accounts receivable. And what happens is, is you want to tie this to customers, okay? And then your invoice is basically there are short paid. So somebody still owes you money and potentially for multiple tickets, okay? So that's where your accounts receivable comes in huge, 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 huge. Huge piece of the puzzle. You you want to jump in there and do one for fun? Let's say. Is there a way that since we haven't been doing this, when we start doing this, to put in the line of sand that you're talking about? So we can start doing it. Okay, correct, correct. So what you would probably do is you would probably go here, you'd go home page, and then you would say system assets and you'd go to your receivables home page. Okay. This is like who owes me money and you'd hit go. Right now all of mine's gonna be under counter sales, which is terrible. You don't ever want it to be there. Okay. You want it to physically show your different customers. And what you would do is you would actually kind of click here and then you would you would get into this particular person's entity. You click here and you basically say this, apply payments, I'm going to pay the whole thing off, et cetera, et cetera, and kind of go through it. We, we actually need a, a customer that's kind of like, hey, I don't know what to do because these are counter sales. But you would go apply all the payments. Anything that has been satisfied needs to be satisfied. And then anything that's still out, you want to still leave it out so that it can keep advancing on its own. Okay. Yeah, but that's what we So the day payments, you just can go all the dates from when it started to where we are now. Okay, correct. So what needs to happen is that um, if you want, we can even mock it up real quick if you wanted to kind of see. Okay, and say well, since okay, we are changing like one name of our company. Sure, sure, okay. sure. And so and we want to start afresh, you know, put in the recipes, you know, just kind of this work, work as a band-aid. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Out. So uh -huh. now we want to start it, you know, as it should be ran, starting with the recipes being Okay. Inventory being for. Okay. Cool. So cool. we're going to want to start just a whole new, like I have, you know, permission or whatever. Sure. Sure. But I want to start a whole new company to get that going and just start you new. Is that hard to do? No, it's really not. It's really not. So you are going to have multiple kind of like pieces of the puzzle kind of open, or you might have to even print some stuff out. So you're like, okay, this person owed me this much, this much, this much. Depending on how detailed you want that data, you would you could literally draw some lines in the sand and we could help you through that. Okay. Um, it, it's it's basically the system is retroactive. So even though current date is 10:22, I wanted to put an invoice in for 7:12. I could create an invoice for 7:12, and all of a sudden it starts aging from 7:12, even though it was entered today. So it's all it can be retroactive. Like, oh, well, that's three months old, you know, yeah. or whatever. So I mean, for us, that's that's perfect. It tells yeah. us when it works. Correct. Correct. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's good because. Uh, we just want to write out this month as to what kind of we're doing now and then okay, sure. starting in November switch. Awesome, awesome. There are some great people here in the Denver area that are awesome, awesome, awesome. Like you Steve need to, or yeah, Santi. Steve or Santi or there's even some other people that, uh, are you guys planning on being here for the next couple of days as well or what's your plan? Uh, yeah, we have our account coming in tomorrow to go okay. over that stuff with you guys. Okay, and, great. Um, I might on the third day. Oh, she's yes. the third day. Okay. Um, but uh, tomorrow maybe I get my production guy out here so you can kind of go over the recipe build. You know, okay. Or okay. I can go in. Oh, and the web page. I think that okay. will Facebook because our web page is down right now, but we, okay. have, we have a Facebook page. Okay. Where we had that stuff on like what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's a, there's a lot of options there that you can even do, even potentially creating orders right from they're uh, scrolling into the lighting commerce yeah, and stuff. Awesome. We're going to be talking customers, receivables, everything tomorrow. And some of these same questions that we're having, we're going to be dealing with this kind of stuff tomorrow. Good, good stuff. Awesome.
Great. Uh, we were kind of answering some questions there. Do you guys have any particular questions? Or We've kind of been bouncing all over the place. This is pretty much typical Atlas training. We just kind of go all over the place. Absolutely. Andy, go so, for it. We have case prices. So essentially, if you buy a case, you get 25 cents off per item. Per item. Uh -huh. So I've been doing it. I'm just changing it every time. But it's always in the case every time. So I've been doing it for different times, having to go in and edit price. Is there a way to have like a case price? Or would I have to maybe recipe a PO of just um, a certain No. Uh, you'll probably start with talking into buttons and even what we call tiered pricing type stuff. So according to quantity, how many, what happens, okay? So this, this is all dealing with sales, okay? There are multiple reasons that you need to do this, okay? So if you have certain things that you're selling in bulk, you would actually create a, what's called a button a smart group button, okay? So they're, they're kind of fun, but you basically can create tiered pricing automatically. And then according to how many you sell, it automatically knows how, many, how much to charge them 